Hello and welcome to another SOLIDWORKS 2017 tutorial for Canterbury College. Okay, so today what we're going to be looking at is how to do the basics of extruding a part. Um, so what we're going to do, start off very simply, we're going to start a new part. So we've clicked on new, we've then got our three options, today we're obviously we're going to go with part, and then all you've got to do is select OK. Now, as we said before, the part is the individual component that we're working on. So this is where we're going to do most of our freeform 3D modeling. So we've got our blank page. We're going to start on the features tab on the top left here. And of course what we're doing today is extruding. So this is extruded boss base. So this is basically like creating your basic solid feature. So we're going to click on that. Now first thing it comes up with is select a plane. It's always a good idea to read the messages on the left. This is basically where the software tells you what it wants to do. So select a plane to draw on, basically this is what it's saying. We've got our three to choose from, front, top and right. Um, if you're drawing the side profile, start on the front or the right depending on what you prefer. Or if you're drawing the top bird's eye view, use the top plane. So I'm going to select right. So once we hover over it, it highlights up nicely, you click it. Now it's normal 2 as we saw there in the video, so it's just flicked round, it's put us so we're square on to that view. So now we can draw quite happily in this view and what we draw will come out nice and easy. So what we're going to do is we'll start off with a very simple rectangle. Now up here it's automatically flicked to the sketching tab, so this is where we choose our sketching entities basically. Now we've got a nice rectangular one there, so we're going to start there, so start sketch a rectangle. Now, there's lots of different rectangle types. We're just going to keep this simple. We've either got rectangle. Okay, we do that simply by kicking, clicking on one corner, then the other corner. Okay, no dragging, no dropping, none of this. You click once, you click again. It sets out the basics for your tri tri rectangle. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the other sort of rectangle because although this one does create a rectangle, it doesn't make life easy, and I'll show you why in a second. Complete rectangle. I'm going to select this one, the center rectangle. As a matter of principle, really, or best practice almost, we try to always work from this point here. This is our origin. This is basically the middle of our object, or that's what we should like it to be. It's the middle of the 3D space. So, with our center point here, as we can see, it says click one for the middle, click two for the outside. So I'm going to click once in the middle, drag my mouse out to the side, and it, you see that it keeps it as a nice regular rectangle shape. Okay, so from here we're going to look at adding a smart dimension to this to um, basically give our sketch some size and some shape so that we know how big it is and how big it is in relation to anything else. Okay, So use the smart dimension tool that's up here, we click on it. Now what we can either do is one or two things. We can click on a line, like so, and this gives us the length of that line. So all I've done is I've clicked. I've now just moved the mouse around, it moved, follows me about, I'll drag it up the top here out of the way somewhere and click again to drop it. Now I'm going to set this to 100 millimeters. Now units are automatically selected, okay? So you could drop down here and select millimeters. If you don't put anything, it defaults to millimeters because that's what we've got our document set as. So we're just going to tick it. That's now 100 millimeters along this length, which is why we can see that these two black lines have gone black because it means that they are 100 millimeters apart. Now, if I want to do the height of this, which should be the next thing, obviously, I could just click on this line. But obviously, for more complicated things, um, I might not be able to just click on the line. It might be the distance between two lines. We could do that. So we can click on the top line again, jumps up with 100, and if we click on the bottom line, it does the distance between them. So we can drop that and we can make that one 50 for instance. So this now means that I have a nice regular rectangle that's 100 millimeters by 50 millimeters. So this is going to be my basic sketch. I'm now going to try and make this 3D. Now because we did features to start with and we did extrude boss base, we've now done our sketch. It's fully defined because all the lines have turned black. Um, especially when we stop hovering over them, they stop turning orange. There we go. So this is now fully defined, this is what we're aiming for, it also says fully defined at the bottom of the screen down here. Now we're going to end our sketch, which is this one here. Don't confuse it with the red one, which is basically cancel sketch. We don't want to do this, we'll lose everything we've done. We want to end the sketch. 
end the sketch, it thinks about it, it flicks it round, and it's now basically asking us what do we want to do to make it a 3D object. So we've got your boss extrude commands here now. We've got our first one which is set is blind. Okay, Blind is basically saying how far do you want to extrude in this direction with no reference to anything else, it's just the dimension which is this bit here, so it's currently set to 10 millimeters. Now I'm going to want 20 millimeters, so I'm going to change this to 20. Again, no units, it's not really a problem. Okay, So that's automatically changed the yellow shaded area into a bit bigger because it's now it's 20 millimeters. Now the other thing I could do is, because we said about the origin point, we want the origin to be the middle of our object. You can quite clearly see here that although it's the middle of the sketch, it's not the middle of the object, it's on the back wall of it. So to make it into the middle, we can change this from blind to mid plane. And what that basically means is it does half the dimension in each direction. So the sketch becomes the very center, origin becomes the very center of the object. Nice and simple. Once it's there, we're just going to tick OK. All right. So we now have our nice solid block that we can spin around quite happily that has our origin point right in the middle of it. There we go. So next, what we want to do is we want to add some more features to this. So this is our starting block. Um, now what I want to do is add a little extra square onto this so that we can have it extruding out from the front. So just as you imagine, we're going to do extrude boss base again. So we're going to click on extrude. Again, comes up with the same message, select a plane or a face. Now this time we're just going to select the plane, the face of the object rather than the plane. So we click on the front. Now, this is a little bit difficult at this point because the whole thing's at a slight angle, it's not easy to draw on. Okay? If we start trying to draw on this, um, it comes up at a funny angle, nothing looks quite right, it's quite hard to deal with. So what we do instead is we use the orientation bit up here to flick it around. Now we could set one of the predefined ones, or if you use the normal 2 command, which basically spins the object and the view around so that you're looking at it square on, like it did before, this is just prompting it. So you do the orientation, you do view, normal 2, and it spins it around. So I've got my little rectangle here which I threw in. I've just used the normal rectangle tool here, not the center one because I don't want it relative to the origin, I want it over here somewhere. So now we've got to fully smart dimension it. So smart dimension, um, I'm going to make this a 20 millimeter square this time, so click on the edge, click a dimension in, click on an edge, click the dimension in, there we go. Now, the square is now set, isn't it? That's sketch of a square, nice and simple. It's still blue. Now the reason the lines are still blue is because it's not fully defined. Now if you think about it, it's because we have no reference to where this is. So if we grab the corner of it for, for instance, we can drag this down wherever we want. So it has no um, location, it has no existence. So what we can do is we can smart dimension it this time, but rather than this just the sketch, we can smart dimension it to something else. So we could dimension it to the origin, but what we're going to do here is we're going to dimension it to the edge of the previous feature. So we can click on the edge there where it highlights up, drag it down, drop it in, and I'm going to make this one 10. Okay. We can do the same for the bottom. So again, click the bottom edge, click the bottom edge, drop it, put it in at 10. Okay. So now it's gone fully defined because it's got a reference from basically this corner. It's saying it's 10 up and 10 along, and then the, the square is at 20 millimeters. We can then end our sketch again. Now this time it hasn't spun it round for me, so it's not obvious, but we can see it's highlighted at yellow. If we then spin our object round to look, we can see that it's protruding out. Again, I'm going to set this one to a little bit more, so this is going to be set to 30. And it's already set to blind, which is what I want. So I'm then going to just tick that. There we go. So straight away, we can see how we can add a second feature onto a previous one. It's got a list of the features down the side here, and as you hover over them, the different ones highlight to show what they're related to. Now, so this is how you add material. Now, obviously, the next step would be to take material away. Now, it works pretty much the same. So we've got extruded boss base for adding material, and then you've got extruded cut for taking away material. So we'll click on extrude cut this time. Same message pops up, click a face or a plane. So I'm going to draw it into the side of this one here. Okay, again, it hasn't spun round, so we just go up to the orientation, hit normal 2, and spin it round. There we go. Now, what I'm going to want to do here is I want to draw a circle and cut a hole through this one. 
So up to the circle command on the sketch tab. A couple of different types. The other perimeter circle isn't used very much. We mainly stick with the set normal typical circle. So I'm just going to drop this in the middle of here somewhere. Doesn't really matter what size does it because we can smart dimension it afterwards. So smart dimension. First thing I do is give a diameter to this circle. Now diameters work a little bit differently to the other dimensions. Rather than clicking on both sides and trying to dimension, because it's a circle, it only has one side. So if you just click on the outside of the circle or on the edge of it, it automatically jumps up with the diameter dimension. So you, same as usual, drop it down. You can enter a dimension in. Okay. So we can then take that. There we go. Now, same as before, we want to do the object to the edge of a previous feature, just so we can give it a position. Now, there are two ways to do this. You can either click on the edge of the object and then click on the bottom edge of the feature. There you go. So that drop up like that, and we can set that as a dimension. Or you can do it from the center. Now, the center is harder because it's you know all the previous dimensions all jump up every time you get close. So you have to be very sure that you've clicked that orange dot in the middle that says you've actually clicked the center of the circle. And then you click on the feature to give a dimension to it. Okay. So again, that's fully defined. All the lines are turned black, so that's great. We can end the sketch. Okay. And then, as we said before, this works pretty much the same. You've got the same commands that you do for the boss extrude for the adding material. This is just the cut extrude for taking material away. Now, we could set a distance of 30, and that would just cut through there. Or if we know we want our um, cut to go all the way through the object, we could just set it to through all. Okay. So that would deliberately extend it out so it cuts through anything in its path that is in this object. So we can then just tick that. There you go. So that is cut away a hole through the middle of that one. Nice and easy. Okay. Now the last one I'm going to show you is a little bit more complicated. Um, we're going to do an extrude cut again. I'm going to click on the surface. Now this time we're going to use the polygon tool. This is a little bit more complicated than previous ones. Not particularly though we can run for it quite easily so just going to normal too quickly just so I can see what I'm doing and so we're going to click polygon now in here you can basically set up any equal sided shape okay so we know that hexagons have the same number of uh, angle uh, it has the same angle value throughout um, and the same length of the side uh, same with octagons uh, dodecahedrons all these kinds of things the north sides you add on um, it doesn't really matter it all comes up as the same you know the same equal angles all the way around the object so if we just stay with the hexagon basically what we're doing is we select the middle of it and then we drag out okay so we've drawn a nice hexagon now the easiest way to dimension a hexagon is using the guide circle on the inside because all of the faces touch onto that so if you give that a dimension it works or you dimension from opposite sides okay so opposite flat faces we can give that one a dimension of say 18 okay and it automatically scales the sketch accordingly because all of the sides are linked all the angles stay the same so obviously they all must change to reflect that okay now again same way we do most things you could dimension from the edge to the edge but because we're going for the center of an hexagon we can just do it off the center point like we would with a circle and we can set up that so I'm going to do these as 15 from the top and uh, from the bottom and the side. There we go. Now, it's not fully defined still. Okay. Now, why might this be? Uh, it's because it has no reference to where it should be orientation-wise. So, obviously, because it's just around a center point, we're basically saying it can freewheel like this quite happily. Now, what we can do is we can also use our smart dimension to not only set lengths, but angles. So, for instance, if we said that this line and this line want to be at an angle, there we go, that's popped straight up with an angle, we can drop it, I say well I actually want them to be at 90 degrees from each other. And this works for any two lines or any li line of a sketch and a previous feature. If they're already at an angle you can set an angle, if they're parallel obviously it'll come up with a, dim it'll come up with a dimension line for a distance. So you have to be very careful with that but this is how we set angles. So, in the sketch again now straight away we can see that our cut's going to go all the way through. I don't want my cut to go all the way through. I actually want to just sort of put a, a hexagonal shaped hole 
on the object but not all the way through it. So this time I'm going to leave it as blind but I'm going to change it from being 30 to being 10. Because remember the whole whole original uh, object was 20 millimeters deep. So now we're going to change it to 10 so it's only going to cut halfway through it. We can then tick it. You can see straight away we've cut our hexagon in but it hasn't gone all the way through the object. Okay. Now that is the basics of how you add and subtract material. So it's extruding boss base and extruded cut. And if you can master these bits, you can pretty much master any of them. So um, this would be your first task that you do with me. I've got a couple more that you can ask for to do some practices on them. And basically just have a fiddle around with it, okay? Um, and then once you've got the hang of that, we'll move on to the next tutorial. Uh, there we go.